Good evening, Arslings. My name is Simpsy. How are you all doing? Welcome back to some more The Last Kingdom Total War mod on Thrones of Britannia. This is episode 2, and we're playing as Uhtred, son of Uhtred of Bebimber. This is episode 2. In today's episode, we're going to be continuing our quested conquest by Alfred the Great, having the siege of Kent. So, if you like the sound of that, feel free to leave the video a like, subscribe if you're new around here with notifications on, leave it on the comments, feedback and suggestions, and where you'd like me to expand and conquer. I'll put in the description below the mod if you guys would like to download it and play along with me. We had to defend Cookham in the last episode, and in its defense, I was rewarded by Alfred the Great and was betrothed to his firstborn child, his daughter, Ethel fled. We haven't had a child just yet, but uh, hopefully we can. So, let's push to Kent and continue to grow and build our army before we push to Beb and Burr. Alrighty guys, welcome to the Battle of Kentwerberg. I guess it's like Canterbury or something, I'm not entirely sure. But it's a siege here today. Four units of spears, three swords, two axes three archers and some cavalry as well. So once we conquer Kent on the far coast, eliminating one of Alfred's main enemies, we should have a large enough force made upon my own merry men and West Saxa men as well. Alrighty, I'll put in the description below the mod if you guys like to download it and play along with me. Two battering rams, four siege towers. Alright, let's divide the army up where, we're, where we can. But once we take Kent and the surrounding lands, we should have enough funds and military manpower to push north and retake my ancestral home of Bebenber, for I am Uhtred, son of Uhtred of Bebenber. But depending on who you ask, we could be called Osbert. <laughs> Been really enjoying Season 4, and I felt like doing a Let's Play back on Thrones of Britannia. There still are a couple factions I still haven't played as, on like a radius mode, oh, of um, Thrones. I played a vanilla campaign as Guthrum and Guthrum of East Anglia and obviously Alfred of Wessex. I did do a Radius mod of Scotland as Kirkin. That was quite fun, but maybe I should play as Difflin. Maybe as the Northumbrian Viking faction. But once we take Northumbria, hopefully in the next episode, uh, we could switch over to a different version of the mod, which starts with Uhtred in Bebenbur as his own faction. Um, with the uh, surrounding forces and we can maybe, I don't know, become the king of North Af uh, North Africa? <laughs> uh, I say North Africa so much in other series. I was meant to say Northumbria. That's what we could do. So looking at the city of Kent, just trying to divide it up here, we'll attack from the right side here, one battering ram, one tower. I think I might actually divert one of the towers to capture the southern gateway here. And I should be able to hide some troops in the small forest here. Okay, that's enough. Two units pushing this way. We might need some supplementary forces. I want to try and get my cavalry into the city as quickly as possible and let's let slip the dogs of war. Well, the main assault with my archers and two arrow towers in the battering ram can push upon this way. Alright, let's start the battle and go for it. Now guys, this series will end in the not too soon future, so let me know in the comments, feedback and suggestions. Would you like to see more Thrones of Britannia on the channel? Or maybe I should go back to another Total War or strategy game instead. Alright. Let's push up towards this gateway now, on the far right, and I was trying to get you as close to the gateway as we can, 
But here we have three units of cavalry loyal to Utrecht of Bebenbur. And then we have the mighty siege tower pushing further back here. It's a really cool settlement that the Kentish the have, have here. They are leaving the field. All right. More siege equipment and forces slowly but surely approaching the gateway. But it looks like my archers have been absolutely decimated in the first few volleys by the Kentish. We slightly outnumber them, but by nothing too crazy. This is going to be a long, arduous, protracted siege, I can imagine. It's going to be a hell of a grind for Uhtred of Bevenbur. A real test. Okay, looks like we haven't had much resistance here in the dirty grain fields. Further in the south, waiting for our cavalry contingent to push up. We just need the swordsman to hopefully take the gateway uncontested. And then we can go with hammer and anvil, rapid strikes with the cavalry. My dog is going ballistic. I don't know if you can hear. Oh, the city gates and their dogs. <laughs> My siege tower has made its way on the walls. And now the men of Wessex and of Uhtred are pouring into the city. Ne leave none alive. My axemen should make quick work of their spears here. Oh, we've also now destroyed the enemy gates. And we can push five units in along with Uhtred and his general's bodyguard. Looks like, <clears throat> what's this, must be the second or the third King of Kent, excuse me. <clears throat> oh, a little bit of a frog in my throat. Uh, yeah, this must be like the third, second or third Kentish King, because we killed the first one in the defense of Cookham, where they surprisingly aggressively pushed us, even knowing um, Uhtred's renown. Tonga. Tonga work boots or something. <laughs> I need to turn that shit off. Right, turned off Steam notifications. I don't know why that's on. My settings must have reset. But the Axemen now are pushing into the General's bodyguard. But the majority of my military forces are pushing through the main assault and the main gateway. Okay, we've had some routing units here, unfortunately. My archers and one unit of axemen. But that's understandable. As I push them up to drag primary fire away from my infantry, which are more valuable. Which you're going to need for this. And we've taken the main gateway now. And hopefully we can take the other two. There's a force here coming in. We want to try and counter charge that. They seem to be holding quite well. Against Uhtred, son of Uhtred of Bebenbur. <laughs> I just love saying his name. Oh, we've been intercepted here by some Axemen, which I didn't see. We're actually taking this gateway quicker than the one on the far side. Look, you know what? I'm going to move my cavalry quickly now. Even though they have to go up this treacherous chasm. God, it really, we have to go all the way around there to get them in. That's quite cool. I have to go through the, the quarry, essentially. Because we're, gonna, we're just going to have to do it because we're getting caught there and we... My forces are really not living up to the fight. They're getting pushed back here. There's only roughly, what, 300? 
400 man difference. Push for it, man. If we can't take Kent, how can we take Bebenburg? Uh, my cavalry needs to rotate now that we have the gateway on that far side. It'll take a little bit of time for the cavalry to rotate and track through the treacherous path. But, once they're in, we'll be laughing. It looks like we've nearly beaten them on that far side anyway. But we have the gateway under our control here. We can easily move our men in. But there is still dogged tooth and nail fighting. It's ping pong. Casualties inflicted and casualties sustained back and forth for either side. You know what, I might just need to... Like, Seeing as you had an ammunition, just throw, come in there, skirmishers. Draw your short swords and add some more bodies to the slaughter. Oh, we've actually won there. So if I was a little bit patient, we could have got them in. But no matter, my cavalry has had a little bit of a warm-up run. Got to get the horse's juices flowing. Ah, <laughs> <Yes. laughs> oh, damn, Arschlings. All right, let's hold there. We've nearly pushed through this gate, but to be honest, they've held us tremendously well from the main assault. And they've kind of negated our cavalry hammer and anvil strikes. The unit routed there, but it looks like they're going to try and come back. And my cavalry needs to get in and help and start capping the town square. Right, that's a little bit more in our favour, that's what I like. Six or seven hundred men difference. When it got to nine, it, you never know. Sometimes battles can turn quite quickly like that. The cavalry has finally rotated through the mountain path and is now in the city of Ghent. Cavalry, run them down! We've, started, we've kind of pushed them in the side street there. Come on, swords, help us out. Everyone push for it. There's only a measly 40 men in that army out of the 160. Hey, the enemy general is dead. We've killed another puppet king. I'm sure the Witten is getting sick of electing kings of Kent who keep dying in quick succession. The general unit, even though their general is dead, is holding that. And there's a unit of archers there peppering us, which we really need to push. Oh! God damn it, they've actually rotated oh, it's spears as well. They've rotated a unit out. As if it was goddamn speeds. <laughs> so typical. Alright, push back there. Right, come on. Good, now this is what I want. Try and hit it from the side. There we go. Even though pushing two units head on into Spearman is suicide, if you can pin and surround them by all directions, you can nearly wipe a spear unit regardless of the quality. And as you can see here, it's starting to buckle as we've pinned it with my cavalry by all sides. Finally, the cavalry has come up useful in this siege. But patience is a virtue. If I was a little bit more patient, we could have maybe saved more lives bringing my cavalry in. Stretching the enemy defense was the play for this siege. And it looks like we've been successful. Yeah, I doubt that their reinforcements coming towards the town square now are going to be a match for the cavalry and additional swordsmen within there. I quite like how reactive the AI is. We don't need to push and plug it. 
we just need to rather hold the position and wait for the countdown to initiate. Quickly now, man. Form shield wall. Alfred smiles upon us. And Uhtred commands us. The cavalry is now capping the town square. And now the main forces from the gate are pushing in. Slowly but surely bringing down the Kentish banner and raising Uhtred's standard. Uhtred of Bebenbur. I don't want it to stop the cap. Because we still have to wait. 150. 150 seconds. So, even though we'll maybe suffer a little bit of casualties, no, they're mostly skirmishes. The cavalry can hold there for now. Hey, victory! We have victory here today. A close victory, supposedly. Okay, I'll take that. Alrighty, let's have a look at the casualties sustained and casualties inflicted. So we deployed 2,010 against their 1,380. We outnumbered them by roughly around about 700 or so, closer to 6. But they did have the additional support of arrow fire, which was massive in this. Utrid got 86 kills, the spearmen did quite alright. Being asked to go for a more aggressive approach, 183, 86. Swordsman did really well, 128, 157. Axman Bowman didn't do as much as I would have liked, but maybe it was a little bit much for them to arc their shots up and over the wall. Cavalry did fine towards the end, but looking at the um, the Kentish force, they're 128. Yeah, so that army only probably got 400 kills, 300, yet we suffered 1,000. So 600 of our casualties came from arrow fire, a lot of them coming from the archer contingent unit. We have 1,000 men to hold and convalesce before we continue to take the rest of the Kentish territory and push towards Bebembur. They only have 211 remaining. Now guys, just thought I'd be honest, if you've noticed some weird editing discrepancies throughout episode 2, it's because for some reason when recording this mini-series, all the sieges broke on the campaign map. I can perform auto-resolve settlements, but I just can't seem to play the sieges anymore. And you would have seen that technically that was the East Anglian Faction. So instead of scrapping this mini series where I put a lot of effort into making the thumbnail and doing the first video, which was fine, um, I don't want to scrap it. So I thought I would just do the Battle of Canterbury in a custom battle, which I would have done on the campaign map. So this series won't end here today. We will still be able to do all the other stuff for episode 3 on the campaign map, move all the way to Beb and Burr, build up our forces, but we won't be able to play the siege. It will be in a custom battle. But Maybe if I start, once I take Bebenbur in episode 3, a uh, fresh save, maybe one of the mods corrupted or something, we can play as Uhtred within Bebenbur. But for this series, I really wanted to build up, help out Alfred, which I have done, uh, defending Cookham, marrying Ethelfled, throwing out the Kentish forces, helping Alfred, and now my reward will be to push north and take my ancestral home of Bebember, which we will do in episode 3. We will have the siege of Bebember, I promise you. So thanks for watching, take care, goodbye. Unfortunately guys, it is time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know in the comment section down below your feedback for the series. And if you'd like to see more, that's the best way to ensure more content. Leave a dislike if you're not enjoying the series. Check out my social media links if you want to stay connected with me. Facebook, Twitter and Instagram all in the description below. Patreon and merchandise link in the description below along with the Steam group. Come and join the community on Steam. And on that note, unfortunately, I have to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching once again. Make sure to take care of yourselves. Go out and have a fantastic rest of your day. My name is Ben Simsy. Goodbye.